So the second talk is uh, Key Prediction Security of Kid Sponges by Bart Menink. Okay, uh, <clears throat> ah, yes, I cannot walk around here, so I have to uh, stand here. So welcome to my presentation. A uh, bit of explanation to the picture. So there has been a lot of analysis on the Keat sponge, and it turned out that there was one small piece of the, the analysis that was not really finished yet. Um, so basically what this work does, it's the last piece of the black box security of the, well, of the Keat sponge. <clears throat> So um, I, I think most of you know the basic sponge construction. It's a hash function. It takes a, a permutation, in this case permutation pi. Um, and then you have an inner part and an outer part. And the message is always absorbed in the outer part, step by step. Then you permute the, the state. And in the end, you truncate, part, um, you truncate uh, data by squeezing the outer part. Um, the construction turns out to be very popular. Since the introduction, it has been used in many hash functions, including SHA-3. Um, many lightweight hash functions are based on it. And it is proven that if you take an ideal permutation pi, then this construction behaves like a random oracle up to 2 to the c over 2, where c is the capacity, so the size of the inner state. Um, but this is just keyless hashing, uh, keyless uh, cryptography, just hashing. Um, it turns out that you can also use the sponge in a keyed setting. And this is what the keyed sponge does. And originally, the original idea of the keyed sponge is just to glue together the key and the message. So you, you use the, the, the normal sponge as a black box, but as input of the message, you just don't take the message, but you glue together the key and the message, and then you pad it into R bit blocks, and then you absorb it step after step. And this is the outer keyed, this is a, the original key sponge, which is currently known as the outer key sponge, because the key goes into the outer part. Um, there is an alternative, namely the inner key sponge, where the key goes into the inner part. So you just initialize the state um, by having the key k in the inner part. It doesn't need to be c bits. What matters here is that the key size is smaller or equal than c bits. Um, and this is the, the inner key sponge. Uh, finally, there was the full key sponge, because it turned out that you do not need to have, if you have a keyed state, so if you have um, a secret state, you do not need to restrict yourself to arbit absorption. You can have full state absorption. And this is the full key sponge. Um, note that the full key sponge is a generalization of the inner key sponge, because you can just pad the message in such a way that you have arbit message blocks, and then you pad it with zeros. So the full key sponge is, is a generalization of the inner key sponge. And this work considers, um, therefore considers the outer key sponge and the full key sponge. So the focus in this work is on the outer key sponge and the full key sponge. Um, and this is a picture that covers both of them. So um, I'm sorry I, I changed the, the style, but it's the same, uh, it's the same function. Um, so we have a capacity C, which uh, guarantees basically the security which is the capacity uh, during the squeezing. So here you have a squeezing of R bits, and the capacity is C. And for absorption, you have a capacity which I currently call C prime. Um, so the absorption of the key, the key is first padded into blocks, then a message which is padded into blocks. The capacity is C prime, which is zero, which is C if you take the outer key sponge, and which is zero if you take the full key sponge. And this picture does covers both the full key sponge and the outer key sponge. Um, now, if you look at the security of the analysis of the, the scheme, the scheme has received a lot of analysis. Um, but if you really simplify the bound, really look at the, the core terms in the bound, you see that both have a comparable security bound. So, um, if you take m to be the on, uh, the data complexity, so the, the cost of making construction queries. And the time complexities, um, which in this case corresponds to the number of queries to the permutation pi, then the, the, the bound really is something of order m squared over 2 to the c plus m times n over 2 to the c plus some magical term. And this applies for both the full key sponge and the outer key sponge. There are a lot of constants hidden in this equation, which I did not put on the slide. Um, but at a high level, this is how the bound looks like for both constructions. Um, this work focuses on this last term, this magic term here. And what this term basically says is it bounds the probability that the attacker predicts the key. Um, and what do we mean by this? 
Um, so we focus on the key absorption part in the sponge. So the rest we forget about. We forget about the rest. We focus on the key absorption. In this case, we have lambda blocks, which are absorbed one by one. And now the, we consider the following game for an attacker. So the attacker can make primitive queries, evaluations of pi, um, namely n of them. And then we randomly select a key, and the attacker wins if the query history, so all queries that the attacker made, cover the evaluation of the key absorption here. Indeed, once the key is selected and you absorb the key here, you make lambda permutations of pi, and the attacker basically wins the game if these lambda queries are already in his query history. Um, so it's a weird game, right? It's, it's not a security model on its own. Um, but what happens if you look at typical Keats sponge proofs, this is it's typically a bad event. So if you look at the analysis, somewhere hidden in the analysis is a bad event, namely the event that the attacker accidentally broke this. Um, however, in this work, we focus on this um, bad event in particular, and that's why we called it the key prediction security. Um, but it's not a security notion on itself. It should be seen as a part of a big um, security analysis of the key sponge or the key duplex or whatever. Um, so how large is this key prediction security? So the attacker needs to make queries, and then the key is selected, and the attacker wins if his queries cover the evaluation of k. Now first consider the case where the key is one block. So here we, we change the picture. So the key is just one block. It's absorbed, but then the permutation is evaluated, and then you start with message m1, etc. And this happens, for instance, in the full key sponge, where c prime is zero. It also happens in the outer key sponge if the key is smaller than the, the key size is smaller than the rate. Um, but for this, the, the security bound is pretty obvious. Um, the attacker makes n queries, so it can make n permutation attempts. So it can make n queries of this permutation for different key guesses, and the attacker wins if any of them is correct. So basically, the key prediction security would be n over 2 to the k. Um, However, for more than one key block, the analysis turns out to be significantly harder. Um, and there is, a work, uh, there is an analysis of Gazi et al. who considered this event as part of a big analysis, and they proved that um, the, the key prediction security is at most b to the lambda, b is the full state size of the permutation, times n over 2 to the k over 2. Um, and it's, it's a Tedious is a technical analysis, um, but it's used in many sponge proofs. Um, many follow-up works use this analysis of the key prediction security as a black box, even though it was not named key prediction security, but they use this analysis, this result, is bound as a black box. Um, but it should be obvious that this bound is not really tight. I mean, it's counterintuitive that you have a very bad bound. Here you have basically 2 to the k security, here you can add 2 to the k over 2 security. So if you look at a concrete example, so suppose we take the outer Keats sponge. Um, these are some really arbitrary numbers, like a 320-bit uh, state size, a capacity of 256 bits, a rate of 64 bits, and a key size of 64 bits. If you, for instance, take these numbers, so an outer Keats sponge with these numbers, um, the, the security bound really behaves as follows. So here you get the key prediction security term. So these are the, the, the basic terms, which I'm not touching in this work. The key prediction security would be n over 2 to the k, so you basically get, I mean, it's a dominating term, n over 2 to the 64-bit security. However, if you now double the key size, so you take the same b, the same capacity, the same rate, but a twice as large key, you also get 64 bits of security. And Katja, Kiak, and Norx. Um, and these are the parameters. Um, note that Kiak was a full keyed sponge, the other ones were outer keyed sponge. The red ones are the ones where the key is larger than the rate. Um, one would be tempted to say that in this case, the key prediction security improves the analysis, but well, there's, a, uh, there's a, um, um, a trick here, namely that these schemes, they were indeed out of key sponge, but they initialized the state as if it was a full key sponge. So if you look, for instance, at ASCON V1.2, um, you see, this is uh, just a print screen from their paper, um, you see you do full state absorption and full state squeeze, um, out of state 
uh, outer part absorption and squeezing, but the initialization of the key is on the full state. So, and that saves them, well, saves them. I mean, um, that means that the, the analysis we did in this work does not improve the analysis of ASCOM, but the original bound already applied, and the same holds for Ketchup. So, I don't want to, to oversell by saying that, it, uh, that our results apply to ASCON and Ketchup. They don't apply to ASCON and Ketchup because the analysis was already, the scheme was already good enough um, so that we didn't need to do the work for ASCON and Ketchup. However, um, if you still look at, for instance, the ASCON parameters, so if you take the ASCON parameters with 320, 256, 64, and 128, which is the example which you saw a couple of slides back, um, then this would be the outbound. So m squared over 2 to the b, n over 2 to the c, plus n over 2 to the r over 2, so n over 2 to the 64. And the new bound would basically improve it to n over 2 to the 128. So intuitively, if you limit the online uh, 2 to the power 160, the old bound would give security as long as the offline complexity is 2 to the 64, and the new bound would give security as long as the offline complexity is at most 2 to the 128. Um, but once again, this is only for the parameters. It doesn't apply to ASCON itself. Um, but a case where it does apply is TROPE. So TROPE is um, how they call it the lightweight framework for network protocols. Uh, they use the sponge for many things. So they wanted to have a simple small code size, so they used the, the keyless sponge as a black box for everything. So also for message authentication. So they use the key sponge as a black box and then they the inputs are always absorbed as if it was an outer key sponge. Um, and these are the, the parameter sizes of strobe. So uh, forget about the big ones. Now for the small one, uh, it has a 400-bit state, a 256-bit capacity, 144-bit rate, and a 256-bit key. So the smallest version of strobe effectively absorbs the key in two rounds. So this means that if you would apply the bound, the analysis to the, the alt analysis to strobe, you would get a bound that basically looks like this. So the first parts don't matter in this work. So this is the, 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 the security, 2 to the 128-bit security, even though you use a 256-bit key. But now we improved it to n over 2 to the 256. And intuitively, this means that if you limit the online complexity to 2 to the 100, in the old case, you only had security as, as long as the offline complexity is 2 to the 128. Uh, but now it gets to 2 to the 156. Of course, one may argue that 2 to the 128 is still quite big, um, but it is an improvement. <laughs> um, so to conclude, this key prediction security was basically the last missing link in the key sponge proofs. So somewhere hidden in this key sponge proof analysis, there was this term, um, but it was non-optimal for, for various results. Um, it's close to the optimal bound. There is a small loss um, due to a proof technique. Um, but there is no attack faster than a key recovery. Um, it applies basically to every usage of the outer key sponge with a key larger than a rate. Um, there are other examples like HMAX SHA3 of, of Naito and Yasuda and the sandwich sponge, sandwich sponge um, that use the, result as a, use the result of Gazi at all as a black box, and now they can use the new result. Um, then there's strobe protocol framework, and also in lightweight permutations, if you use a really small permutation, then you could have could run into problems where if the rate is smaller than the um, key. But basically what you should do in this case is just do full state absorption in the first round. So just initialize the key, the state using the key. Uh, that concludes my talk. So I'd like to thank you for your attention. One quick question maybe for Bart. So among all the keyed mode for sponges, which one have a tight security analysis now? Does it close the gap for, uh, for, for some modes, or um, is there room for improvements? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, the bounds I gave in the slides are just, uh, well, the, the, I'm abstracting away a lot of things, right? Um, but I think the, bound, the last bound of Asia Group 2017 is pretty tight. Um, I don't really see an attack that, I mean, you always have these small, I mean, that's a, that's a general analysis. Um, that covers many variants. So if you look at specific variants, sometimes maybe you can derive a better bound. But uh, that bound, I think, is pretty tight. It's general, but it's pretty tight. OK, so if there is no other question, let's thank Bart again.